to be able to decide if the dental market is ready now to implement 3D printing in the daily workflow, we have to actually analyze what's going on right now. And what we see is that there are a number of uh, scanners, that there are a number of uh, different kinds of software packages already available, daily used in the market. What we see also is that we have uh, milling machines daily working in the lab. And we have the finaliz finalizing the end product. Um, so, yes, it is possible that we exchange the milling machines by 3D printing machines. But to do so, the uh, materials have to be developed in such a way that the aesthetics and the characteristics are perfect in accordance with the needs which are uh, now there in the market. Looking at, at 3D printing as a technology, additive manufacturing, um, I would say that dentistry is actually the industry where 3D printing would actually work very well because what we do in dentistry every day is we make, for every patient, one-off, so it's low volume, complex, small parts. That's our everyday workflow. And 3D printing is the technology where you can actually create these complex small parts in large volumes. For every individual patient on a platform, you can print for maybe 10, 15, 20 patients at the same time these small parts, meaning that you are not milling one piece at a time, but in one energy run, you're actually creating a whole lot, a mass production of complex small parts. So this means that 3D printing, additive manufacturing, is actually the technology at this time that you could use in our field of dentistry to produce dentures, crowns, fixed partial dentures, bridges, etc. That's why NextDent was founded in 2010 as a subsidiary company of Vertex Dental, with the focus on research and development of biocompatible materials. Materials which apply to the medical device directive and materials which were tested in accordance with the cytotoxicity, genotoxicity, irritation and sensitivity tests. Limitations 3D printing in dental, I think the opposite is true. I think now we have a technology that we can design and create everything we would like. And what we create here is that we will give back to the doctor and the dental technician the creativity so he can make and he can design and he can create exactly what he wants and what he needs. Finally, in the favor of the patient. When we compare subtractive manufacturing to additive manufacturing, we actually see that the milling technology has some limitations when we try and make, let's say, the optimal for our patient in dentistry. The technology milling has its limitations because of the size of the drill and the burr that is used when they go into the milling technology. This means that not every sharp edge or angulation that you've designed in the crown or bridge prep that you're actually making for your patient can be followed by the milling technology which follows after you've made the impression. This means that the technology itself, the milling, is actually dictating the shapes and the preps that you're making for your crown and bridge work for the patient. And this limits your, let's say, inventivity where you're trying to create a new crown or bridge for your patient. So when you go into additive manufacturing like 3D printing, this gives you the possibility to actually create any shape that you've prepped for your patient into the final restoration crown or bridge or denture that you're actually going for. Thanks to the fact that the infrastructure in dental is already there, a couple of years, I'm 100% convinced of the fact that 3D printing will find its way in dental. 
And actually my vision is being supported by a latest publication of Smart Tech Industries, which shows that 3D printing in dental will grow from a 1 billion turnover to a 3 billion turnover in only five years from now. Where when you go into milling, you might be throwing away 90 to 95 percent of the material that you're actually using, the puck or the block that you're milling your final restoration out of, you're creating material which you cannot use in dentistry any longer. This means you're downgrading the material that has been made to a high quality, which you maybe only can use to, let's say, make a plastic bottle or use as a filler in your driveway. On the other hand, when you go to additive manufacturing, you only use that much of the product that you actually need to print it. So you do have a little bit of waste, but that's not more than a few percent of the total material that you've been using to create the crown or bridge that you're actually printing. This then could mean that we even get printers that you can use in your dental office. So you can buy a small printer that you could use in maybe in the beginning to make temporary restorations for your patients. But I think as time goes on, we'll get into very small printers that can also make very complex, precise, small parts, such as crowns and bridges for our patients. Meaning that part of what the laboratory does actually is then taken into the dental practice itself. When doing that, you might say that this technology could develop into being a threat for dental technicians. On the other hand, you could also say we're introducing a new technology into dentistry with all sorts of possibilities which we may, we may not have even thought of yet. And this gives you the possibility to go right into all the creativity that you have as a dentist or a dental technician and use this type of technology to get the optimum for your individual patient. And on top of that, I would like to add one more thing. Um, it, when we consider the fact that we are actually now producing um, crowns, bridges, dentures, almost without waste, everybody will understand that we have a considerable cost reduction here as well. So we can save time, we can predict our output, and we can print that without waste. One of the research projects that we did in my department was actually looking in a dental lab, how long does it take to 3D design a crown, a crown that can be either milled or printed. And looking at the production time in the dental laboratory, this digital workflow with milling or printing actually reduced the design time of the crown by nearly 50%. So this meant, this should mean at least, that in the end, the end product is going to be cheaper for the patient as well. So I think I have to agree with you on that. And looking at this technology now, let's say where we still have centres where printing and milling will be done, I think it's not too far in the future that the dental clinic will end up with their own printing unit and be able to print what they want to make for the patient themselves. The technology, the way that we see it develop is going that quickly that I think we're not that far away of individual printers in the dental clinic enabling the dentist to maybe even come up with restorations within one day, not milled, but printed in the colour that you want to look for at the in the patient's mouth with the fit that you want to have to make it clinically acceptable. I understand that 3D printing in dental can be seen as a threat, such a game changing. However, as an accident, we focus all our energy on innovations, new technologies, 
instead of focusing our energy on the old. We have the technology, we have the opportunity, and there is a workflow, an infrastructure. So you, as a businessman, as a doctor, as a technician, can become a director of this new business model.